Hey everyone, uh, just checking, are, are we now live or is it almost time? Hi Nadan, uh, welcome to the session and warm welcome from all of us in Blackbox. And uh, thank you for, uh, you know, volunteering to speak to speak on ChatGPT. And uh, first of all, congratulations on your uh, best-selling book, The Art of Prompt Engineering with ChatGPT. And... Uh, so my name is Anuradha Tota, and uh, I am. Uh, you are live, actually. You are live already. So can you mute your YouTube? So you are on YouTube, and this is live now. Yeah, yeah, Anuradha. Yes, yeah. So uh, students will be joining uh, Nathan and uh, in this uh, Zoom, you have uh, HRs joining, human resource managers and campus recruiters joining in the Zoom. And uh, uh, welcome all HRs. Uh, this is as part of Campus Recruiters Network and uh, this is the fourth event that we are doing consecutively. And to remind you, every month there will be an event for uh, the benefit of campus recruiters through Black Box Campus Recruiter Network. And I uh, would like to mention this uh, event is being uh, relayed on YouTube. And there are a no number of students because ChatGPT is a revolutionary technology that uh, would help all of us to improve our productivity. So number of students from across uh, the country will be joining, uh, uh, will be uh, going through this uh, session uh, through via YouTube. And if you have any questions, probably you can ask the questions in between. But I've just seen what uh, Nadan has typed in uh, YouTube. He probably wants you all to log into ChatGPT so that there can be some fun exercises in between. Okay, so welcome all of you and uh, over to you, Nadir, to take this uh, session forward. Perfect, thanks so much. Yes, so um, we're going to be going through for the next couple of hours on really learning a lot of things about ChatGBT. Um, our focus is going to be on this idea of prompt engineering, and hopefully by the end of this training, you'll see what the big, big difference is between learning what prompt in, learning the skill or the art of prompt engineering versus just learning certain use cases and then just how to use ChatGPT. Um, hopefully during this training, you start to realize that there is a whole nother level to this program that most of us aren't really using. And that's what we're going to start to open up more and more. Um, I'd like everyone to open up their chat and we're going to start this off with a little game. So for those on YouTube, go ahead and open up the chat at the bottom. And for those here on Zoom as well, you can do the same. I'm gonna show you some pictures and I want you to try to guess whether they were created by a human or whether they were created by an AI. So are they real or are they robot? So here's our first one. Oh, oh let's, here we go. Here is our first one. So this image here, do you think this was created by a human or was this created by an AI? So is this real or is this robot? Go ahead and put it in the chat, whether it's in YouTube or here. Here, so already here on Zoom, we have everyone saying AI, 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 AI. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid this one is actually created by a human. So for the past 20 years or more, we've actually had a huge trend of digital art. We have artists who work on Photoshop, artists who work on even Microsoft Paint back in the day. And they build incredible, incredible pieces of digital art, but these are not AI generated. We have a whole history of amazing art that today you may look at it and think is AI generated, but in fact, it isn't. It's actually made by humans. So this one is actually real. Let's check out our next one. What about this one here? Do we think this is real or is this robot? 
So we have some real, we have some AI, a bit more of a focus on AI here. Um, so this is an AI piece. However, it's not just any AI piece. This piece won a really prestigious prize in New York. It became really famous towards the end of last year as it won a large artist prize. And this started to really question, well, what, what is art? What is the human's role within art? When we see something as beautiful and as amazing as this kind of, uh, this kind of painting, we start to wonder, well, where does creativity lay? Um, how can we actually tell the difference when something is real or when something is created by a robot? Um, how about this one? Do we think this one is real or robot? So in the, okay, in the Zoom chat, everyone said real, real, real. This is definitely real. And yeah, have a look at this. Have a look at the paint brush strokes. You can see the acrylic paint, right? You can see all of the acrylic here. This is robot. <laughs> I made this one using Mid Journey. I asked it to, to use a, a Van Gogh style and it, it, it created this. It can really replicate and trick our mind to this extent. This is how amazing these generative AI tools are becoming, is that here, everyone was convinced that this one was real, but in fact, it's not. Let's have a look at a couple more. What about this piece? Is this real or is this robot? It's a famous piece, but is it famous for being real or famous for being a robot piece? Oh, we got a lot of real, we got some AI, we have 50-50. Yeah, pe people, are, people are struggling. <laughs> the more we go through this, we just don't know. Uh, but we have like majority real here in the chat. Um, in this case, it is actually real. This is a piece by Pablo Picasso, of Picasso. But if you thought of Picasso, but you've never seen the painting before, you already start to understand how the AI is working. If the AI is able to build it, but it is not a piece that's actually by Picasso, then it means it understands what the pattern is and what would make it a Picasso. In this case, the cubism. But this one here is real, but it's still very difficult for us to ever know whether it's real or not. Let's do one last one. This last this beautiful water painting. Is this real or is this one AI? So remember everyone on YouTube, also play along down in the chat as well. Okay, we got a lot of AI going on here in the chat in Zoom. Oh, we do have one person who thinks it's real. Oh, a couple more people who are on the real side. Uh, okay, we're basically 50-50 here. And it is a famous piece from last year. And this famous piece is real. This was actually by a human. Um, when you look at it, maybe you think, yeah, I know it's by a human because I look at the paintbrush. I look at the brush strokes. But we saw that piece earlier and that didn't help us because that one was fake. So this one is real. So I just wanted to start with a little introduction game to already show us where we are when it comes to generative AI. When it comes to artificial intelligence generating new things, this is the level we have been for the past year when it comes to visuals. But now we have gone a step further when it comes to written stuff. And that's what we're exploring. We're gonna be exploring three different things today. We're gonna to see how can we use a conversational approach with ChatGBT to get much better results. And then we're gonna to start to take a look at how can we use a act as or a role play approach with ChatGPT. And then finally, after that, we're going to move on towards taking a look at how we can get even more out of ChatGPT by training it to take on our own voice and to write the way that we write. So to start off, let's think about this conversational approach with ChatGPT. If we want to think about how do I work with ChatGPT, I need to understand what ChatGPT is doing. And so what ChatGPT is doing is all it is doing is guessing what is the next best word. That's more or less it. It's just guessing the next best word, just like on your phone. When you get your phone and you start typing, try to guess the next. The, uh, the phone is going to try to guess what the next word is. And here it thinks I'm going to go for best, maybe time, maybe steps. 
and it's going to give me some suggestions of what that next word could be. ChatGPT is doing the same thing. It's not thinking through everything at once. It's just guessing one word at a time, which is really, really mind blowing when we start to see how it works. Because if it's only just guessing the next best word, it means the way we need to approach it is very different. And this is, and I'll start by explaining this very shortly. So the biggest mistake that a lot of people make in ChatGPT is they ask ChatGPT to do something and then they accept whatever ChatGPT says. They accept the first response from ChatGPT and they don't actually refine the response. This is the biggest mistake that I see almost everybody making. And we're going we're gonna to dig in to try to understand why this is such a bad thing. I'm going to walk us through an example. I'm going to give you an exercise. And then we're going to carry on thinking about how does ChatGPT actually work? And we're going to realize how important context is if you want to use it successfully. So let's take a look at a precise example. If I head over to ChatGPT, so um, I head over to chat.openai.com. And here I'm, I'm going to tell it that I'm running a training on ChatGPT with students and recruiters. Um, my training focuses on prompt engineering and not just use cases. And I want it to help me build out a description. So I'm just going to send that to ChatGPT. And the thing is, it's going to do a good job. And that's the problem, is that because it does a good job, most people just accept it and say, oh, this is great. Let me just copy and paste this. This is OK. Let's continue. But today I'm going to teach you that that is not the right approach to do. And we're going to learn a much better approach. So if I take a look at this, uh, ChatGPT decided, hmm, I didn't give it a title. So it thought I need a title. Well, I already kind of have a title, so I don't need its title. It started to write a description. I can see this. Um, yes, it's kind of building from the history a little bit. That's OK. If I take a look down here, it starts to focus. What is my topics that I'm covering? It doesn't know the topics I'm covering. And now it's, it's, it's going to carry on. It's not really focusing on my aims of the training. So I've asked it to do something, and the output that it's given isn't what I wanted. But that's normal, because I didn't provide enough information. But what I don't want you to do, if you do something like this, is just go ahead and close the screen or say, oh, ChatGPT can't do this, or try to open up a new chat. Instead, we're going to work with a conversation. So here I'm going to say, I don't need a title. I just need a description. Uh, and I can start to specify further. And I'm going to say, um, our training focuses on how to use a conversational approach to working with ChatGPT, how to use ACT. As, and also how to get ChatGPT to copy your writing style. So I'm going to start to give it some feedback, just like I would a human, right? If I ask something to a human, if I ask something to you, um, and then when you reply and I don't like your response, well, I'm not just going to say, okay, we're going to end this now. Uh, instead, oh, sorry. I, just going to mute. Here we go. I'm not going to say that we're going to we're going to end our conversation right now, and I'm just going to accept this. Instead, I'm going to give you feedback. So here, I receive something from ChatGPT, and here I'm going to give it feedback. And if I hit return, I haven't even asked it to rewrite the the text for me. But ChatGPT works with context. So when I give it this prompt, it doesn't just look at this. It looks at everything we've said before. So it takes all of this into account. And then from all of this, it starts to guess the next best word again. And so here we go. Now it started to do this and it's doing it a lot better and a lot closer to the kind of things that I want. But hey, I'm building a description. I'm probably gonna use this on YouTube. So I'm gonna tell it some more information. I'll be using this on YouTube. So I need it to be more concise and also in more accessible language. 
And so now it's going to try to build it out, taking into account the kind of guidelines that I've asked. So now it's a lot more concise. Look at this description here, here instead of all of this beforehand. And now it's only giving me a couple of bullet points. And yes, we are using real world examples. We're using practical tips. This is all cool. Okay, now I finally have something that is pretty okay. But I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to carry on using ChatGPT to make it even better. What I can do is I can ask ChatGPT for advice. Um, what do you think I could do to improve this? Uh, give me five tips. So now it's going to take a look at what it's built. It's going to take a look at the conversation we had beforehand, and it's going to think about what can we do to improve what we're writing. And now it's saying, okay, hey, I, I need attention grabbing language. If this is a description and this is meant to convince people to join the video, then in this case, I need something like mastering, powerful, proven techniques, expert tips. You know what? I like this. Number two, keep it short and sweet. Yeah, when it's too long, it doesn't like it. It's, it's even saying that it still writes it too long. Concrete examples, tell you what, for the description, we're probably going to skip on this one. Highlight benefits, end with call to action. Mm, let's, let's just do one, two, and five. So can you implement one, two, and five? And you see, I even made a mistake here, a typo, and ChatGPT just ignores it. It fixed my typo here. And now it carries on building based on that. So now it's going to make it more attention grabby. So are you ready to take your chatbot or language model to the next level? Then join. Okay, here we go. Yes. There we go. This is a, a lot nicer. Um, and this is a way that I can start to work with ChatGPT to get something here that I can use versus something up here, which I couldn't really use beforehand. Um, what I didn't have to do is I didn't have to focus on how do I make the best, best prompt at the beginning. Um, this perspective of prompt engineering is saying that, hey, ChatGPT is a conversational bot, so I can just have a human conversation with the bot, and at the end, we can get to something that actually works for me. So this is the approach that I would definitely recommend you to try out a lot more. And this is the main thing that people are not doing. People are not doing this because on social media, um, the easiest way to get lots of likes and lots of, fo of follows and lots of shares is always by saying, hey, there is this really cool use case. Look at what I did. And if you do something like this, you can only share what you sent to ChatGPT and what it replied back. You can't share with somebody a full conversation like we've had here. This isn't something that you can put into a social media post. And so because of this, we're not actually able to see these kind of conversations. We're only able to see the very simple stuff on social media. Huh. So with that, That's, uh, just to disturb, uh, mm -hmm. so how do you want to take the questions? There is a question in the chat box. So do you want to take the questions while you speak or do you want to oh, give a break so, after? Um, we're about to go into an exercise. So I'll probably review the questions when we're inside the exercises. All right, okay. Fine. So we're now gonna move into an exercise. And so, um, yeah, as we said before, uh, so we set up this training uh, for students across India. Um, so I, I run all different trainings across the world for all different teams. And we're setting up one for, for students. And while we're doing it for students, we thought, hey, uh, the recruiters can also join us here as well. So we also have a part of the exercise that's more relevant for recruiters here on the left. So in this exercise, what I would like you to do is that if you're a student, I'd like you to open up ChatGPT and I want you to ask it to write a cover letter. So the, the kind of the, the job application letter that you would send based on any kind of job description. So you can go online, have a search for any job that you would like, co copy the job description, maybe copy some stuff about yourself, give that to ChatGPT and ask it to write a cover letter for you. What I would then like you to do is to do just like what we did and use a conversational approach. Say, mm, I don't like the language you're using. 
Can we shorten this? Let's take out that. How about with us? Can we add something like this? Can we add something like that? I'd like you to use the conversational approach, but at the end, for you to have a really good cover letter. And then for the recruiters, I'd like you to do on the other side is I'd like you to use this to be able to build a job description. So think about any kind of role that you're hiring for and then start to ask ChatGPT to help you build a job description and then use a conversational approach to be able to build out that job description even better. So the time, uh, we're, we're currently at uh, 21 past. So we're gonna kick back off at half past. So you have nine minutes to go through the exercise. And when we come back, uh, we'll answer any questions. So especially on YouTube, go ahead, write down in the chat, ask all your different questions away, and we'll be able to see all of those and we'll answer them as we come back. So I'll see you all at half past. So you have eight minutes to dive in and to carry out the exercise. I'll speak to you in a minute.
Okay, you have one minute left. So if you finish up uh, whatever you're currently writing on ChatGPT, and we're going to come back in one minute time. Bala, Ilan. Okay, so we're at time. So we're going to come back and we're going to carry on. Uh, for those who are here in Zoom, can you please not unmute yourself since we are live on YouTube? Um, so we're going to, with this exercise, hopefully what you saw was the first thing that you asked ChatGPT to do is going to give you something that's pretty good. And that's something that pretty good is what most people out there are using from ChatGPT. But if you understand how ChatGPT works more, then you're not going to work with what is just okay or what is good. You're going to carry on the conversation and you're going to keep giving it feedback. You're going to keep refining the output more and more and more until you have something that is great. So let's think a bit more about how ChatGPT works. So we, we spoke earlier on about how ChatGPT is just guessing the next best word. And so we say something and ChatGPT tries to guess what's going to happen next. So let's think about this. Most people, they tend to write maybe one line, maybe two lines. They write maybe maximum a little paragraph that they give to ChatGPT. So let, let, let's go back to ChatGPT to see how this looks like again. So if most people write something like this to ChatGPT, then all ChatGPT has as context to guess the next best word is this. So it's taken these words and then it's going back into its memory. It's trying to understand how different words are connected to each other. When it sees the word description, when it saw it before, what other words were around it? What came next? In what context did they have the word description? What about A? What about write? It's going to take all of these words and it's going to try to understand what was the context of when it saw these words before. And so here, it only has a small amount of words to actually do this analysis. And so when it's guessing all of these next words, it doesn't have much to try to guess from. But as soon as I say a second thing, it's now going to take into account everything that was said before. So now it's got so much more context that it's taken into account. It's got so much more things, it's understanding, and it's going to compare to its understanding of language. And when it's comparing all of this to its understanding of language, it can then start to create something that's a lot better in output. So the more context you give ChatGPT, the better its outputs. So you may have, have heard about GPT-4. Uh, GPT-4 is OpenAI's brand new model. It is incredible. But most people don't really understand why it's that amazing. Because when I click on it, it doesn't look different. I type something in here. 
hey, if, if I take the exact same prompt as I said before, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to try this with GPT-4. The main difference you'll see is that it's slow. Apart from that, when we're playing with it here, you might not actually see a difference. And you may think, what is this big fuss? Why is this in the newspapers everywhere? Why are people talking about GPT-4? Well, let's think about what we said of context, right? GPT, um, the language model can give us really, really good outputs the more context it has. But there is going to be a limit to how much context you can give it. If I go to this one over here, um, the, here I'm using GPT 3.5, which has a limit in English of about uh, 1,400 words. Um, in Hindi, its limit is actually way smaller. It's only got a limit of about 200 words. So if you're using ChatGPT in Hindi, um, then it will only actually look at the past 200 words of context in order to try to guess what's going to come next. So that means its accuracy is going to be quite low. Whereas if we start to work with GPT-4, GPT-4 has a minimum of 8,000 tokens that it can take. So in words that in English words, it's about five and a half, 6,000 words. In Hindi, that is going to be around 800 to 900 words. So we're already talking about four times more words that will be taken in as a default. However, they're currently upgrading it to what they call the 32K version, which means as soon as they finish their upgrades and their testing, GPT-4 will be able to take in, in English, about 25 to 28,000 words. Or in Hindi, that's going to be about three to 4,000 words. So it's going to be about 16 times larger context. That means I could take a news article, give it to ChatGPT. I can take another news article. I can take a chapter from a book. I can take so much information from everywhere, give it all to ChatGPT, and then ask it to give me information across all of it. I can get it to summarize everything. I can get it to understand the whole writing style of a whole book. So we can start to do amazing, amazing things, but that's because of the way that ChatGPT works is all it's doing is guessing the next best word based on the context that it has. And for the context that it has, it's what, how many words has come before it for the instructions. So whenever you're gonna be using ChatGPT, always think more about the context that you're gonna give it in order for it to work better. So let's push this a step further and think about how is it actually working with this language? Because it is a complicated thing. The way I like to look at it is think about um, if anyone here is, uh, so is anyone here a fan of Lord of the Rings? Has anyone here either read the books or watched the films? If you have in YouTube, just go ahead and say in the, in, in the chat that you have or over here in, uh, in Zoom as well, feel free to write in the chat that like you are a Lord of the Rings fan or something. Any Lord of the Rings fans out here? Not as many as I thought, maybe. Um, Oh, yeah, we have quite a, quite a few coming on there. So um, imagine, imagine we have a fan of a particular book or a film like Lord of the Rings or, or, or any other film out there. Um, I could ask them to summarize a whole part of the film. I could say, oh, can you tell me about the opening? And they could describe exactly what's happening in the opening. And they would be able to remember that. Maybe they watched the film. Maybe they read the book 10 years ago. But still today they could describe the whole opening. How on earth can they do that? Well, if I ask them to quote the first two paragraphs of the book or to quote the first five minutes of dialogues in the film, they won't be able to. Because as humans, we don't remember words. So when you watch a film or when you read a book, you, so let's say at university, you have a book and you're going to study, you're not going to remember the words in the book. Instead, when you look at the words, you're going to convert them into meaning. You're going to build something new in your mind that isn't the words, but it's something that's easier. <laughs> Sorry, if you're, can you please stay on mute if you're in the Zoom? Perfect. Um, so 
as humans, you're going to not going to understand, you're not going to be rem remembering the words, but instead you're going to be remembering the meaning. And so you're going to convert the words to something new and something that you can actually work with in the future. ChatGPT does exactly the same thing. So ChatGPT was given a lot of words, about one trillion words. So that's a, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of words that it was given. It was given about 500 gigabytes of just text. So for text files, that is a lot of data. And when it was going through them, it didn't memorize everything. Instead, it looked at a word and it said, okay, what words are before it? What words are after it? And then it starts guessing at itself and it starts building an understanding of the word and it builds what we call a parameter. And so all ChatGPT does is it builds these understanding of each word and then it remembers its own understanding. So just like a human, I could ask ChatGPT to summarize a film, summarize a book, but I can't get ChatGPT to write out the film or to write out the book. ChatGPT won't be able to fully quote the book that it's read because it doesn't have access to its full memories. Instead, it's only gonna remember the parameters, just like we only remember the meaning and the context. So ChatGPT is actually a lot closer to the way that we work than we would ever imagine. And so that's, that's how it guesses the next best word. So these are the top three takeaways if we're thinking about using a conversational approach. Um, first of all, Start with context. When you start your chat with ChatGPT, the more information you give it, the better it's gonna be able to answer something. So if you give it every single context that you have, say, hey, I want a description about this. I'm gonna use it here. These are the different things that's on my mind. The more you give it, the better it's gonna be. When it gives you something back, give it honest feedback. You can tell it, this is, th th this is what I think of it. I don't think it's too great. There was this issue, there was that, et cetera. And then it's gonna be working on that feedback and it's gonna make it better. And in general, don't talk to ChatGBT like, like it's a robot. ChatGBT is built to be like a human. So a fun fact, ChatGBT, one of its largest data sets was actually from Reddit. Um, if anyone here is on Reddit, especially, I guess, maybe, uh, especially with the student community, so those there on YouTube, a lot of you may be on Reddit quite a lot. Um, you'll know that on Reddit, people, people talk like proper humans, you know, <laughs> people insult each other all the time, people, people talk in the way that they, they, don't, they don't feel they're being watched. And uh, ChatGBT actually learned from the way that humans interact on Reddit to understand how humans talk. So when you want ChatGPT to do something, talk to it like it's a human, and it will understand you better than if you talk to it like it's a robot. So you don't need to stick with keywords. It's not Siri on your phone. It's a really, really sophisticated bot in which you can talk like a human to it. So that's the end of our first part of today, uh, but now we're gonna move into our second part. So just before we go to our second part, I uh, just wanna do a little shout out that especially for the students in the house, I'm doing a, a little giveaway to help make this knowledge more accessible. So um, we mentioned at the beginning that I, I, I do have a best-selling book, which is this first book here on the left, which is The Art of Prompt Engineering. Um, so this version here is currently about 200 pages long on Kindle, um, and it does go in-depth into so, 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 so many parts of, uh, of ChatGBT. We're covering three, but I think I have 29 chapters. It goes really in depth. Um, in the US, yeah, the price normally I think is 950. Um, but um, what I'm doing today is, so when we all, we're organizing this training, the thing is I, I do a lot of trainings for, for corporates around the world for different companies. And of course I do trainings for them and I charge them a lot for those trainings. But then uh, I also wanted to try to get in touch with more students. And I was trying to do that in Pune before, um, last month, uh, but it was quite difficult logistic speaking. So we set this up to make it a lot easier. Um, and so I'm gonna be giving away some books, um, giving away free Amazon copies of these. Um, all of the different illustrations that you've seen in my slides and throughout my book, um, I actually made them and I made them using another tool called Midjourney. Some of you may have heard of Midjourney or DALI or Stable Diffusion. Um, and the idea is if you see here, like this character, 
this is what I do is I build a single character and then I develop that same character into a different context. So if you see like the previous slides, we have this boy here is the same kind of boy as this one here. And it's the same character as this one here. And every time I take the character and I bring it into a new context, and it's what something I love to do. And a lot of people ask me, can I, can I teach people how to do this? So on the 8th of April, um, I'll be launching a book about this. Um, and so if you scan this or type in this URL, um, if you're a recruiter, um, I can definitely send you a, a, a reviewer's edition of this new book that I'm launching on the 8th. Um, and then if you're a student, um, I can send you both books, which is the, prompt, the Art of Prompt Engineering and also Building Consistent Characters with Midjourney. So if you're on YouTube, what I'm also going to be doing in a, uh, in a second is I'm going to post the link um, in the YouTube chat so you have access to it there as well. So if you just go ahead and sign up, then I'll be able to send that over to you. Uh, just copying that now. And there we go, it should be over in YouTube. So with that said, we're gonna move on to the next part. Um, I'll also just put that over here in the chat in Zoom to make it more accessible as well. There we are. So for our next part, we're gonna be looking at role play. So what is role play? Um, here I have uh, my lovely little character. He's my favorite one. Um, I dressed him up here as Batman, right? He's, he's pretending to be Batman. He's pretending to be this person who goes out and fights at night and all of these criminals. Um, so this, the idea of role play is taking on another role, taking on another persona. And one of the best ways to use ChatGPT is to get ChatGPT to take on the persona of another role. So rather than just saying, ChatGPT, I want you to do this, I can say, hey, I want you to act as this kind of role. So let's think about this a bit more. Imagine I have an email, okay? So whether I'm at work or whether I'm at university, so let's say um, after uni, we go to work and then I, I receive an email and I, I write a, re a response. But just before I send my response, let's say it's something quite important and I want to send it to one of my colleagues. And I say to my colleague, hey, can you take a look at this email for me? If I send it to legal, so if I sent it to somebody in my legal department, why would I do that? It's probably because there's gonna be a very specific laws or policies, or there's something that's very sensitive in terms of data wise, in which I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So if I send it to legal, legal already know that that's what I'm looking for. I don't have to say to the legal, can you look at this from a legal perspective? If I send it to them, it's already an assumption that I know the kind of perspective they're going to have. Instead, if I send my email to sales, they're going to think about how are you phrasing your message? Is this the message that we're currently going for? Does this show the value of what our company is offering? They're going to look at things from that kind of salesy perspective. And so if I'm sending out something to a customer, then maybe send me over to sales first. I don't have to tell them, can you look at this from a sales perspective? If I send it to somebody who works in sales, it's already an assumption and an accepted thing of the perspective they have. If I send it to an intern, I'm probably going to ask the intern maybe just to quickly review it, or I may be asking the intern for their opinion, because I want an external perspective on this. Once again, I don't have to tell them my expectations, because it's already assumed that if I'm giving it to them, there is a specific need that I have. Or marketing. What about our branding? Does it look pretty? Is it the way that we write things? Are you using the same voice, the same tone? that we use in our company, right? So each one of these roles, if I want to give my email to them, they've already, um, we both myself and both they know what is gonna be the, um, what is my expectations when I give it to them? So what this means is that our language that we use is loaded. What I mean by loaded is if I say I work in legal, 
you don't just know that I work in legal, but you now know a lot more about me. You presume so much more. You think about, ah, oh, I must know laws pretty well. I must have a close eye to detail. I care about internal policies. I, we start to build all of these different attributes. All of these different things come from just saying that I work in legal. And we can use this as context for ChatGBT. Because when we give ChatGBT a word, it doesn't just look at the word. It looks at where it saw the word beforehand. So in its training database, when it saw the word legal, what kind of words were next to it? Well, probably technical words and probably words that focused on laws and policies. There was probably a very specific way of speaking when any words were around the word legal. So if I ask ChatGPT to act as my legal assistant, then ChatGPT is going to write a certain way, it's going to think about things a certain way, and it's going to give me very specific information that I would want from a legal assistant. So the whole idea here is saying, if I want to set up a chat with ChatGPT, I can actually give it a role. And if I give it a role, I'm actually giving it all of the expectations that I expect from the role. So let's see this in an example. Let's say, um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be in, uh, in Pune next week. So, um, and I, I, I don't know any, any Marathi at all. And so I think, you know what, hey, I, I, sh I should start to learn some basics of, of Marathi. So I'm going to say, um, act as my Marathi teacher. But the thing is, if I now just say act as my Marathi teacher and hit send, I have no idea what's happening now because, oh, yes, oh, this is good. Oh, it, it, it knew to translate this. This is really great. Um, the thing is, it doesn't always do this. Let me try, let me try stop generating, regenerate a couple more times. And you'll see that sometimes, let's see what it does this time. It may not translate it. Uh, a lot of times, if I just ask it to be my teacher in a certain language, it, just like this, it's now only talking to me in Marathi. And I actually don't know any Marathi whatsoever. So if I've asked it to be my Marathi teacher, and now it's only going to speak to me in, Mar in Marathi, that's not what I want. So I need to think of a better way of doing this. So if we're working with role play, we have a different approach. What we do is we try, we set it up just like I did here. We see, does it work? Does it not work? If it doesn't work, then we go back up here and we click edit. And we edit our original prompt. We don't just continue the conversation yet. You only con continue the conversation of an act as prompt after you've got the first bit well. The first bit in an act as conversation is the most important. So if I say act as my Marathi teacher, uh, talk to me in very basic language and translate it to English each time. Um, I don't know any Marathi at all. So, so we will start with the very, very basics. Okay, I can start to set up this way. And now let's see what happens. Huh. So, so now it, it also then decided to switch alphabets here. Um, the reason why is that it had a choice. And every single time it had a choice, it chose it with the first letter. Because the first letter it decided last time was going to be, oh, here we go. Uh, because the first letter of what it said last time was in a Latin alphabet, it did the whole thing in Latin alphabet. But now that it's changed the scripture uh, for the first letter, it's going to do the whole thing in this alphabet instead. And so I can look at this and say, mm, maybe this isn't. This, this isn't the way I want to learn. So I can keep going back and I can keep iterating. I can say, um, keep most of the conversation in English when writing in Marathi. Can you use uh, a Latin based alphabet just to make it 
let's say for, for myself to be able to like pr pronounce and to try to read certain things. Let's start with learning some greetings. Here we go. So now I'm I'm going to set this back up a different way. Or oh, in this case, it, it didn't it didn't listen to me this time. Oh, okay. Aha, so now it's given me both scriptures. Uh, so it's given me original scripture, and then it's also written it in a way that I can then try to start to pronounce it. And now we're going to start to build out the lesson. And if I look at what things are now versus how they were the first time or the first couple of iterations, it's a lot better now. And I could probably continue this dialogue. So when I'm happy with this, I can then click here and I can start to carry on the conversation. Say, OK, now let's start to learn this. Let's start to learn that. Let's work in different ways. But in order for me to get there, it was really important <clears throat> that I just start basic and I start with my actas. But then every single time I see what's missing, I go back, I edit, I try again. I go back, I edit, and I try again. And this is going to be the best way that you can set up something like this. So the first thing I want you to do is to try to set this up for yourself. Afterwards, we're going to learn a bit more about other use cases and why this can be really important. And I'll show you lots of cool tips and tricks. But the first thing I want you to do is for you to get onto ChatGPT and actually have a play at this. So your next exercise, you're going to have another 10 minutes. So we're going to come back at five past the hour. And we have, once again, our two different roles. If you're a student, I want you to ask ChatGPT to act as an interviewer of a job you are applying for. So think of any job that you would want to apply for and set up your role play for ChatGPT to be your interviewer and use it to practice your interview skills. If you're a re recruiter, <clears throat> I want you to do the other way around. Think of a job that you're recruiting for and I want you to ask ChatGPT to act as an interviewee and you become the interviewer and you're gonna interview ChatGPT. And so that way you get to practice your interview skills from the other side. So here are some tips. It's really important to describe what is the role of ChatGPT? Not just is it interviewer, interviewee, but also what is it actually meant to do? What should it be doing each time? You should also try to describe your role. If you're asking ChatGPT to be your interviewer, say, I will be your interviewee. Make sure that you actually set, what are you doing? What am I doing? And it's gonna be a lot clearer. And then I would definitely say, try to tell, yeah, what happens when ChatGPT writes? So every single time ChatGPT does something, what is it that you really want to happen? What are your expectations? And then highlight what ChatGPT shouldn't do. If it does something that you didn't want it to do, then tell it, go back in, edit, say, make sure you do not, and then tell it what you don't want it to do. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have 10 minutes, so we're gonna come back at five past, uh, five past three, um, and so that gives you 10 minutes to start practicing um, the act to ask prompt, which I call role play. And when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about role play and why it can be really cool. So with that, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Uh, feel free to use the, the chat. I see a lot of people there in YouTube also then using it, and I'll speak to you soon.
Okay, so we are now at five past. So with this exercise, I hope if you managed to get into ChatGPT and try to start this, I hope you saw that if you ask ChatGPT something simple like ask, so act as an interviewer, it doesn't really know what to do because you haven't given it enough context. Remember what we spoke about before, context is key. The more context you give it, the better it's going to generate the next output. But trying to know what context to give it during a role play is difficult. And that's why when we were doing this, we had a look for an iterative approach. We wrote something and then we changed our mind. Then we wrote something, then we changed our mind. And then we kept improving again and again. This is the best way to get good at writing these really powerful prompts. Uh, another little trick that I've got to show you is here you can see that I've actually made three changes. And I can go back and I can see the different times that we went through things. 
So every change I make, ChatGPT keeps a record of it and allows me to go back to the previous version, which is a, a really cool little trick that they built there. Oh, sorry, um, I, I just realized, oh, that's my bad. Um, I have my screen paused, so I'm just gonna show that again, which is that um, what I did is I went over here to ChatGPT and here you can see, because I made lots of changes, it says here that I'm on my third out of three iterations. And I can click the little button and it takes me back to the previous one we did. And I can hit it again and it'll take me back to the one before that as well. So this is how we start to work with this act as prompt. Um, I saw, especially in the, in the chats in YouTube, some people were asking for certification. Um, because we want to make sure we can give you something for participation to say, hey, you turned up in the training and you were here. Uh, well, the only people who, who know about the link that I shared earlier on, so who know about this, oh, here we go. This link here are the people who are online with us. And this form here, I will be closing it at about 5 p.m. today. So that way it's not like people who maybe see this tomorrow or something else can, can sign on to this. It'd only be for the people who are here in the training here today with us. So if you haven't so far, I've posted, if you haven't done so so far, I've posted the link in the chat, both, both here um, in, on Zoom and also on YouTube. Um, if you fill that, that one out, that'd be my easiest way of knowing who did attend here today in order for me to be able to issue those certificates. So it's it's not a certificate to say that you've proved yourself in ChatGPT. It's just a certificate to say that you attended the training. I am working on a separate certification exam. Um, it's quite complicated to do. So it's going to take about a month or so to set up. But I'm with ChatGPT trainings, our aim is to build the uh, like to become the global leader when it comes to certifying people's knowledge in ChatGPT. So we're building a proper proctored exam in which you would have to log in. Um, you're not allowed to use any browsers or anything. You'll have somebody watching you via camera. Um, everything will be locked and you'd get to take an exam and you get to work with ChatGPT in a really cool way. But that I can share more information about um, probably in the next month or so. Just while we're at, at, at some updates, there's another project I'm working on, which is I'm building uh, an app on the phone uh, to learn ChatGPT. And so it's gonna be very interactive and the easier way to go through different things. And I'm also building it across languages. So I'm gonna be building it uh, in Hindi. I'm gonna be, be building it. I, I'm gonna try to get it in Tamil, in Marathi, in, um, in Urdu, I'm gonna build it in so many different languages. I'm looking at probably about 30 to 35 different languages to make sure that this kind of knowledge and this material is accessible to everyone and for everyone to come in. So also when you sign up on that form, I'll add you to my mailing list. And the first part of the app launch should be towards the beginning of May, maybe mid-May. Um, and people who are on my mailing list you'll receive invitations to become beta testers if you want first access to the learning app. So with that said, what I'd like to do now is just to go in to show a little bit more about what are some other ACTAS that can be cool. So for example, one I like to use a lot is ACTAS and editor. If, imagine I'm working for a newspaper and I'm a journalist, I write something and I give it to my editor. What do I want my editor to do? Well, my editor doesn't just fix everything. They give me feedback. So I can say, hey, act as my editor, check the language I'm using, check for any grammar, any spelling mistakes, check of the flow and the kind of language I'm using. Um, I want us to use a certain voice or a certain tone in what we're writing. Give me feedback for things that I could change but I want you to just change any spelling or grammar mistakes. So I can set it up very precisely to say, hey, these are the things I want you to change, and this is exactly how I want you to act. And then once you've set it up like this, I just give it texts and then it does it for me. 
It then fixes the issues. It then gives me feedback on the content improvements and it does everything I asked it to do. Another one is act as an author. So when I'm writing something, maybe there's a particular voice I want to take. And this is what we're going to go into more in, in our next part together as well. Um, sometimes if I want it to be written in a very specific way, I think about what author writes that way. Is there a writer that I know or I've read their material before that writes in the way that I want to write? If so, I say access this author and write this. Or, or rewrite this text in that author's voice. Or I say, act as this author, everything I give you, you will then transform into the way that that author would write it. And that way I can give it new text and it transforms it into that author. Another cool one, I could say, act as a developer. So imagine, um, imagine you're, you're working on a project and you want a colleague to proofread your code. And you, they're a very specific colleague. You kind of think of what their role is, what is it that you want them to do, and you can ask ChatGPT to do this. Or let's say you're you're very very technical, um, and you don't really focus on the project management side. You don't really focus on the business analyst side of building out stories and trying to use a user centric approach and all of this. Well, you can ask ChatGBT to act as your colleague and to help you do that. So think about what kind of teams you normally work in, and you can ask ChatGBT to take on one of those personas. One of those people can be ChatGBT, and you tell it, I want you to act this way as one of these people. You give very specific instructions of how they should do this. And then finally, you have a new person in your team, and now you get to have great conversations with them. And you can actually set up different chats here with different act as. What some people do is they build their own personal library. They have their favorite five or 10 different act as that they use. What I don't recommend to do is to just try to find different act as prompts online. Because yes, there are lots. People share a lot of these different prompts, but it's not the best way because they built it for a very specific purpose. If you know how to build these properly, you can build it for your purpose much, much better. Think of it this way. Imagine you're writing a piece of code. Don't just take it straight from GitHub or Stack Overflow. Don't take someone else's code, bring it in straight away without any other thought because, well, a lot of time, the amount of work you need to do to rewrite the code in a nicer way or it's for it actually to make sense in your project is going to be probably more time, especially if it's a smaller piece, than just writing it yourself. So what I would really recommend is to focus on learning how to build these prompts yourself. Okay, and the three key takeaways that I would definitely say for this is the first is remember that roles, so if I say I work in legal, or I'm a developer, or I'm a teacher. All of these words contain a lot more than the word. They contain so much more meaning. They contain so much more context. And so if I use these words, then ChatGPT will actually go beyond the word and understand the whole context of the word. Because ChatGPT works in the same way that our brains work. It was built based on the way we think. That's the amazing thing with ChatGPT, is it's so much closer to being like us than what we would actually believe. Secondly, act as prompts are difficult. If you don't get it right first time, that's normal. Um, I've been using ChatGPT for quite a while, and I've been following the development of GPT-3 since, well, now for more than a year, um, since they've been like doing their, their beta releases last year, et cetera. And even for me, when I set them up, I struggle. For me, it takes about three or four tries before I finally set it up the way I want it to be. So remember, if you're doing this, it is a difficult thing to do. And so if you don't do it right first time, that's totally fine. Today, what we covered is what is the approach you can take to be able to get better at writing them? 
And thirdly, just keep trying. And if it starts to do something really big and ugly, just hit stop. So if you saw it here, the first one, I saw it was going to carry on, carry on, on, carry on. It was actually doing something quite good. But hey, it was going to carry on. So what I did is I hit stop. I can show you another example of how that could look like. If I go here and I try setting this up, um, let's stick with two things at a time. So let's say I now want to change it, but I do that and I realize, oh, I made a mistake. I click stop generating and then I can correct and I can keep trying again. So you don't always have to wait for it to finish if you need to stop it. You can just hit stop if you've realized you've made a mistake and just go back and keep trying again. And if you bear these three things in mind, then hopefully life is going to be a lot easier if you want to get the most out of ChatGPT and use these act as prompts. So, so far today, we've seen two different things. We've seen, how do I talk to ChatGPT like a human, using a human conversational approach? And then secondly, how do I use act as? So how do I use this idea of role play with ChatGPT in order for it to take on a persona in order to help me do what I need to do? Now we're going to have a look on the third thing. The third thing is how do we train ChatGPT? So this is a little bit more complex. So we're going to look at this in a, a few different ways. And this, is, this can be really fun in certain ways, but it's also not needed in others. So some of these bits may get a little bit technical, but hopefully by looking through the way that we tra train ChatGPT, it can help us understand how it works even more. So this is a classic way of training some kind of AI model in the past, is that what we do is if I want the AI model to understand which ones are cats, I have to give it lots of cats. I have to give it thousands. I have to give it millions of cats. And I say, this one is a cat. That's a cat. This is a cat. This is not a cat. That's a duck. That's a cat. And I keep going through. I say, this is definitely not a cat either. So this is what we would normally do if we're trying to train an AI model in order for it to better understand, um, so in order for it to be able to identify what a cat is. So let's imagine this. Let's imagine that I've now trained this AI model on, I don't know, a hundred core cats. So a lot, a lot, a lot of cats out there. And I've trained it on so many different images of these cats. Um, if I've done that and I now show it a dog, can it understand if it's a dog or not? Well, not really, because it was only trained on cats. So a lot of AI has been built for one specific purpose is built to do one specific task, and it can do that very well. But it needs lots and lots of training to do that task. And now if I want it to do a new task, I have to train it again to do a whole new task. ChatGPT is different because ChatGPT is pre-trained. So you may think, what does ChatGPT st stand for? Well, G is general. So when we say in general, it's not just about understanding which ones are cats. It's how do I use it in the most general way possible? So there isn't one purpose of using ChatGPT, which is why it's really difficult to explain to somebody what it is unless they've used it, because it can do so much. When someone says to you, yeah, but what does ChatGPT do? I mean, kind of anything. <laughs> like there isn't, it wasn't built for one use case is being built in a way that it can do so many different amazing things. So this is the general part. The second is pre-trained. So we said before that it received more than 500 gigabytes of text. And when it received this text, it took a look at every single word in the context of other words, and it started to build relationships. And it built an understanding. And as it was looking at the words, it was trying to think ahead and guess what came next. If, if it tried to guess and it got it right, it would give itself a point and say, yay, I'm good at this. If it got it wrong, 
it would say, no, that's not good and, and remove a point. And it would work on this kind of point system. I'm simplifying a bit, but it would work on a, on a basic point system in order to try to define which parameters, um, what should be the weighting of each parameters and how should it build the relationship between words. So when it was pre-trained, it did all of these things. And because it's been pre-trained on this, it means if I ask it to write in the voice of William Shakespeare, it can do it. I don't have to give it examples. I don't have to say, okay, here's some text by Shakespeare. Can you now write in his voice? I can just say, can you write in the voice of William Shakespeare? That's it. If I want it to write a love poem, I can say, write a love poem. I don't have to give it examples of a love poem. Now, this is really weird because throughout most of artificial intelligence over the past 10 years, we really focus on if I ask it to do anything that it hasn't done before, I have to train it again. Because if it's built to recognize cats, it can't do anything else. So this is really rare for us to have this, is having a general pre-trained transformer. Transformer, we're not really going to go into. Um, yeah, you know what? If there's a little bit of time at the end, I will probably go into this because uh, earlier on I told you that you can have less con context in Hindi than in English, and it's because of the T. It's because of this transformer. But if we have time, maybe I'll talk about this at the end. It's, it, it is a bit of a fun topic, but it's very technical. But we'll see. Um, so because it's general and because it's pre-trained, you don't need to provide examples in order for it to do its job. However, what about if I want it to write in your voice? Well, it doesn't know your voice. In its training data set, it probably didn't have much of your text. Well, maybe it did. Hey, maybe on the call we have some, pe some people here that have written lots of books, lots of research papers, and those went into ChatGPT, and maybe it can talk in your voice. But for most of us, it won't be able to. And so for most of us, we would actually have to train ChatGPT to speak in our voice. So how do we do this? Well, to be honest with you, this is actually a really difficult thing to do. Um, there isn't a, a very easy way to do this at all. Um, and it does take quite a, quite, quite a lot of work on our side to, to get this done properly. Um, I'm, I've just paused the screen for a second because I'm going to open something on my side to then uh, let me just check you on the screen yep so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pull out some of my manuscript from my book and i'm going to feed it some text that i've written and i'm going to try to get ChatGPT to understand the way that i write and as i'm going to be teaching it this uh, you're going to start to learn how you can train ChatGPT to write the way that you like to write so I'm going to take the chapter that I wrote on roleplay. So I'm just going to carry on sharing my screen again. Here we go. So this is my manuscript. So this is the part on roleplay. It's quite long, so I'm not going to take all of it. But instead, I'm going to take, let's say, this, this amount. And I'm going to head over to ChatGPT. I'm going to start a new conversation. And here we go. And now I'm going to say here, so here is some of my text. I wrote this for a book on ChatGPT. I want you to analyze my writing style. So here, I'm going to start to show you why it's difficult to do this. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to say here at the beginning, there is not a simple way to get ChatGPT to copy your voice. It is not simple. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can try to do this. Um, but what I want you to learn from this is how do we get it closer? So I've given it this and it's saying, hey, my writing style is clear and concise and informative. OK, this is cool. I provide specific examples and instructions, making it easier for the reader to understand and follow along. OK, that's the way I like to write. You use an accurate voice and avoid unnecessary words of jargon. Ah, 
you know, ChatGPT is pretty good at making the text accessible to a broad audience. It likes the way I structured it, the headings. Okay, and I also incorporate a conversational tone. You know what? This is actually really good. So now that I've asked it to analyze my tone and to analyze, so analyze my writing style, here, this is something that's really good that I can use. So I'm going to ask it to try to templatize this for me. So what I want to do is I want ChatGPT to give me something that I can just use in the future. So I'm going to say this. Thanks. Uh, I want you to build a prompt template for me. This will be a prompt where I will want ChatGPT to rewrite the text using my writing style. So I'm going to see if it can actually work with just this. Normally, I would try to emphasize a bit more, tell it exactly how I want this. But let's see if it can actually build out my prompt for me. OK. Oh, well. It's doing it in a cool way. So it says here, it's going to provide a prompt template for me. The first thing it's going to do is to uh, it wants me to rewrite using my writing style. OK, so in, insert the original text here and the instructions are it needs to read the original text carefully and take note of key points, ideas, information. OK, uh, pay attention to the tone or voice of the original text. If it's formal, formal, then I want to retain the formality. If it's more conversational, I want to incorporate a similar. OK, use clear, concise. Organize rewritten examples. You know what? This is pretty cool. Let's try this. I'm just going to go. Um, I'm going to take a random. Oh, a random news article. Here we go. And let me just. Take this. I have no idea what it is. Okay. Well, actually, I will probably have to do that here. Then I'll copy and paste it across over. So I want it to do this. I'm going to take the prompt. So rewrite the following text using my writing style. Here is the text. I'm, I tend to, whenever I give it text like this, I put it in quotes so it knows the difference between what, what the text is and then what I'm asking it about the text. I find that's a, a nice way to separate it and ChatGPT gets a bit less confused. Okay, so I've got all of this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a new chat where it doesn't have the context at all to see if it works. OK, so here we go. Smoke and mirror trick. I thought I had seen it. Yep. If I start to take a look here. OK, now it's going to start to build that out in my writing style. So here's an example. And this is actually working pretty well. If I briefly have a look over parts of this, it seems like it's pretty close to my style. So this is definitely a first approach that you can take. And this is the one that I do tend to take a lot, which is you, you give it an example of your text and you ask it to analyze it. There is another approach which you could try, but I would not recommend, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you what this other approach is, because every time I use it, it doesn't really work that well. Is another approach is I could give it my text and ask it to write something new at the same time. And it starts to get a little bit confused. Um, so for example, if I say, write an essay, on how uh, turtles will take over the world. Use the same writing style as the following text. And now if I give it this text, 
here we go. And here, you know, so it's talking about artificial intelligence. Now, the reason why it's talking about artificial intelligence is because my text was talking about artificial intelligence. So even though I asked it just to use my writing style, ChatGBT gets confused and it doesn't just stick to writing style. It says, you've given me all of this context to go with. So it's going to take more than just your writing style from the text. So it's going to dig into your text. It's going to take your writing style. It's also going to take the content. It's going to take the structure. Look, it's given me image one. It's given me image two. It's given me image three. It's given me these different things just like I had here. So, is, okay, it didn't give me any screenshots, but it's just given me images here. So when I say I want it to copy my writing style, it's a little bit vague and it's going to be quite difficult for me to write the perfect prompt on how to take the right bits of one text to give to the other one. So the best way I would say for you to do is one of two ways. Either one, you do like I did here. You give it some text from you and you ask it to analyze it. From that analysis, either you could write your own prompt or you could ask ChatGPT to rewrite it in a prompt for you. There is a second approach that I like as well. And the second approach is what I tend to do. Yeah, it, I tend to do maybe even more often just because it's more reliable and it's easy, which instead of talking about writing style, um, I like to focus on voice or tone. Um, I can, because it's going to cut it away from structure. It's going to cut it away from uh, other parts of how, how I write. So the thing I want to focus on is the voice or the tone being used. So I can say, um, use five uh, adjectives to describe the voice and tone of the following text. Informative, instructional, friendly, helpful, personalized. Perfect. So these are going to be my five keywords. So I can take these and I, I, I can build it. I can even build this out myself. I could ask ChatGPT to do it for me, but hey, this one here probably only takes me a couple of seconds. So I can do this one myself. Is that I can build a prompt that I can use again and again to produce the same kind of voice and tone, which would be something like this. Uh, re write the following text using uh, this text and I can have my text here so I can just put it here as like text uh, using an informative, instructional, friendly, helpful, and personalized voice and tone. So I can just now write it out this way. And so now I have this, I'm going to use it as an, I'm going to take my Guardian article here and pop it in here to show an example. I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna take this, open up a new chat so it doesn't have any of the context. Here we go. And if I send this, and here we go. Now it's going into a very instructional, uh, friendly and helpful approach. This, hey there, I'm happy to help you understand a bit more about British history and how it often taught, et cetera. Um, and then it goes through here. So this is um, a cool way in which you can then start to get ChatGBT to take your voice. So the whole idea is if you need to train ChatGPT, then you need to provide it examples. Um, on most things, you don't need to. Because on the majority of things, ChatGPT is pre-trained. So you don't need to train it because it is already trained. However, if you want it to do something it doesn't know, such as write the way that you write, then you will actually have to train it. So I'd like you to try this out. And so everyone's going to be doing this one together. I'd like you to find any kind of text that you've written in the past. 
And I would like you to try out whatever method you want for ChatGPT to try to mimic your writing style. So whatever it is about your writing style that you like, I want you to be able to build a prompt that you can use wherever you want for ChatGPT to rewrite something the way you would write it. If you get ChatGPT to write an email for you, I mean, it's not gonna come in your voice. It's ChatGPT's voice. If you can build a prompt that helps ChatGPT speak the way you speak, now anything you get ChatGPT to do, you can get it to do in your voice. So top tips, ChatGPT confuses writing style with content, like I showed you before. So I tend to like to use the words tone or voice, but also you could use the word structure. You could think about other parts of your text that you want it to take on. And you want to figure out a go-to prompt, some kind of prompt that works really well for you. And once you have it, copy it and keep it somewhere. Keep it on your phone, keep it on your computer, keep it somewhere where you can access. And that's gonna help you actually personalize things that you use with ChatGPT in the future. So you're gonna have seven minutes again. So it is currently 37 past. So we're gonna come back at 47 past, uh, let's say 45. We're gonna give you eight, eight minutes for this one. So we're gonna come back at quarter two. So at uh, 45, yeah, at 45. And I will see you uh, at that time. So just to repeat the instructions again, to make sure that was all clear, is you are finding some text that you have written in the past and you are gonna train ChatGPT to write the way that you write.
Okay, so we are now quarter two. So we're going to come back for the final part together. So you just completed your exercise where hopefully you've been trying to take some of your writing and trying to find what kind of prompts could you use in order for ChatGPT to be able to copy your writing style. For me, this is something really, really important to learn to do in ChatGPT because once you know how to do this, you're then going to be able to do whatever you want with ChatGPT, but still make it personal, still make it in your voice. And so for other people, that's going to be a lot more acceptable than hearing something quite generic. So I was looking at the time and I think we do have a little bit of time where I do want to walk through this whole um, the problem with the T side of ChatGPT. So here I, I, I said that the G is for general. This means it's not just about cats, it's about everything, and it's being pre-trained on everything. The P is this whole pre-training, which is the way it's been fed lots of data beforehand, so you don't have to train it to do new things. It should already just work. Only some things you need to train it for, like your writing style. But the T, what is the T? Um, to explain what the T is, I'm going to take some text here. So I'm going to take one part of my book and I'm going to put it into this tokenizer. So the tokenizer is the way that ChatGBT breaks down language. So if I put this here in ChatGBT, um, so I give OpenAI this, it says it, it has broken down into 162 different tokens. If I look at this to try to figure out what on earth is this token thing? Well, in English, a token is more or less a word. And so what ChatGPT does is it actually takes all of these different words, it separates them out, and sometimes it finds, for example, we have chat, and then the G, and then the PT. It says that the PT is a word, and the G itself is a word. The apostrophe S is a different word compared to it. It breaks it up. Um, let's see, are there some other things that it does a little bit weird in here? Uh, a comma, any punctuation is a token as well. But in general, for English, one word is more or less a token. And then punctuation and a, a few small exceptions. It, what ChatGPT does is it takes this and it transforms it into IDs. So this is what ChatGPT actually receives. Um, so you give it text it transforms it into these tokens. And then it takes a look at this token and it looks at the way, it looks at other tokens and the weighting of them. And it says, okay, I have this token here, which token should come next? And it takes a look at a whole bunch of different tokens and it tries to understand. And then it basically predicts token by token what should happen. So for English, it more or less comes to predicting word by word. But that isn't always the case. So let me show you why. If I take the same text, but that's now in Hindi, and I give that to the tokenizer, so the same text, so not 162 tokens, but 1,185 tokens. That is a huge amount of tokens. Um, and you may think, okay, what is this whole token thing? What, why do we even care about it? Well, have a look at this as an example. If I just take something in Hindi and I type it here, look how slow ChatGBT is. It's really taking its time to reply. If instead I wrote this in English, Look how quick it is to reply. Because it takes, it is building token by token. So the same amount of time it takes to build um, the, so it's going to take in English 167 tokens to be able to build what we saw beforehand. Where, however, in Hindi, it's going to take 1,185. So every single token has a time cost to it, has a time cost. And it also has a monetary cost. So OpenAI, they need to actually process all of this. So it takes electricity, 
it takes machines to run it, and they charge. So they charge per thousand tokens. So if I'm building an app, so I'm building a learning app. If somebody uses Hindi in my learning app, it's going to cost me more than if somebody is using English, which isn't fair because that means developers will actually have to pay a lot more for apps that are built in Hindi versus apps that are built in English. So if you think of yourself as a developer, imagine if your development cost was seven times in order to build it in Hindi. Which language do you think you're gonna build your app in? Right, we can start to see some issues that could arise here. Um, I did a little bit of an analysis. So I just took some text, I did a bunch of translations into 22 different languages. And I started to see how many characters did they have as an input, is the same text every time, and how many tokens did it actually cost? And you can start to see here a little bit of a pattern of what are the most expensive languages, um, which for me, I see as a big, big, major issue. And this huge issue is going to be that for people who are not English speaking or who do not speak fluently in a, uh, a language that uses a, a Latin alphabet as a base, for example, like these ones here, they're not going to be able to get access to these AI tools in the same way that everyone else is. Yes, ChatGPT works in Hindi. It works in Bengali. It works in Tamil. It works in so many different languages. But it is very slow, it is very expensive, and you have way less context. So context is measured in tokens. So OpenAI limits how many tokens you can use for context. Um, when, we, when we want to use ChatGPT here, we have around 2,000 tokens for context. This little text here, just this tiny little bit here, is already more than half of the context we're allowed. Whereas in English, when we did it, it was only 167 tokens. That's like not even a 20th of the amount that we can actually use. So in English, I can actually have a lot, a lot of context and it can do really powerful things. But if I want to do this in other languages, it's not the same thing. And the problem with this is it's not just open AI. Um, OpenAI, this transformer, so this T is for transformer. Transformer comes from BERT, uh, which was um, open sourced by Google back in 2017. And it is the idea that you, you encode words into tokens. You then go through a series of calculations to find to, to find potential next words, and then you do some maths to determine which words have what probability, which ones to select, and you apply some parameters to find the words. Then you, de then you decode the tokens into the words you want to use. So it's, a, it's this whole process and this whole architecture that Google designed. And so Google are using that for BARD, which they're now releasing. OpenAI are using that for ChatGBT. And these are the two biggest large language models, and they will be the two biggest large language models for years to come. So the two biggest models both have the same problem. They favor English, and especially languages that do not use a Latin-based alphabet suffer. And in South Asia, like you saw here, this is where we start to see a lot of the languages that are gonna be very expensive to process so developers probably won't build in those languages. And the reason why I'd like to share this with you in particular is a lot of you students are software developers or are working in this space. And so I founded my company, which is ChatGPT Trainings. Um, and what my big approach is, is how do we build an accessible AI future? So I'm starting to launch different digital inclusion projects in which we're going to be thinking about how do we actually make artificial intelligence accessible throughout the world. So the learning application that I'm currently building, that should be beta testing in May somewhere, um, it's costing a lot to get it in lots of languages, right? Um, I'm going to be having it in more than 30 different languages, 
and the usage in the other languages is going to be minimal compared to English. The amount of money that I'll earn from the other languages is I'll be losing money on the other languages. I'll be only really earning money on English because of the usage costs. But with ChatGPT trainings, we're going to go down this path because we want to build an accessible AI future. And so this is something that I feel is really, really important for us always to think about when we're thinking about these new AI tools is these tools are amazing, but who will actually get to use them? Is it the people who need them the most? Or is it the people who already have the most who are going to be getting even more? Is this going to help equality or is this going to make things worse? So I know that's a, a bit of a different note to kind of end this training on than maybe what you're expecting. Uh, but it's, it's, it's one of my big focuses in the AI world. It's how do we actually build a more uh, equitable uh, space as well. So with that said, um, the, the, yeah, the, the main takeaways for what we were covering earlier is you don't have to train ChatGPT. It is really cool to find your go-to voice. Um, and yeah, there are some third-party apps that we didn't take a look at, but there is the link again, can send you the book and keep you updated with the next projects. And so thank you so much uh, for, for hosting me uh, during this training. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Nathan. And uh, it was a very, very, um, very useful uh, session. Uh, came to know so many things. We use it in a very simple fashion by asking certain questions. There's so much to, um, you know, so many tricks that you have mentioned, you know, on how you can use chat GPT. Um, at least Black Box will definitely buy the book and uh, we will get the link. My phone is not scanning this for some reason. I will get the link. Uh, okay. for the book and you have to know that there is one college called Viswadaya and the entire students are uh, listening to this um, now I'm sure they will be more interested in doing more with chat GPT even probably coding these are all engineering students they'll be also probably trying their hands with uh, coding through chat GPT thank you once nice. again on behalf of the students and the HR professionals on zoom and um, yeah, we look forward to more interactions from you. Thank you so much. Definitely, no problem. And yeah, I, I actually believe, yeah, I, I think there was a change in the URL last minute. So the QR code may have broken. So what, what I'll do is I, I think we have the list of people who registered. Um, uh, if yeah, I'll send you a message afterwards and we, we can quickly send out that link um, out there. And then what I'll do is I'll actually keep the form open until tomorrow. That way it gives pe more people the opportunity to come in and to kind of sign that. Alternatively, if you can send us the link, we'll also send to various colleges we, where we are tied up with and probably oh, they will use it even for their library purpose. So please send us the link. Yep, that sounds perfect. Thank Amazing. you once again. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you much, everyone. Thanks.